Thank you for your interest in the province of Nova Scotia. Here we will discuss exciting exploration opportunities for critical minerals. Critical minerals are mostly unconventional commodities, most often used in high-tech applications. Their relative scarcity and economic concentrations has resulted in many governments to designate these minerals to be of strategic, geopolitical significance and express interest in securing safe, reliable sources for these minerals from stable jurisdictions. Most of these metals are absolutely critical to the growth and development of the future green economy. Nova Scotia has a lot to offer the explorationists with interest in these minerals. It is home to 494 known mineral occurrences, hosting 29 different critical minerals, including cobalt, lithium, tin, and the rare earth elements. Most of these have not been the target of advanced exploration. Cobalt is one of the more prominent critical minerals due to its use in lithium ion batteries and geopolitical concerns with existing global production. Nova Scotia is home to numerous cobalt occurrences, located primarily in two mineral systems. In IOCG-related occurrences along the cobquid chetabucto Fault Zone in the northern mainland, which hosts cobalt concentrations up to 0.57% at the Mount Tom occurrence and up to 12,000 ppm at the Bass River Magnetite occurrence. There are several occurrences in the Annapolis Valley as well, which seem to have an affinity with the five-element vein deposit type. No cobalt occurrences have been subject to modern exploration besides cursory drilling and geophysics, with significant room to grow in all of these known occurrences. Another crucial battery metal, lithium, is present in several pegmatite fields in southern Nova Scotia, associated with peroluminous specialized granites. The most extensively explored Brazil Lake in Yarmouth County consists of at least three documented spodumene-bearing pegmatite dikes, with up to 2.75% Li2O, along with significant potential for tantalum, niobium, beryllium, and rubidium, all of which are also considered critical minerals. Manganese, another metal used in lithium-ion batteries, as well as in steelmaking, also presents interesting opportunities. While there are many small occurrences throughout the province, perhaps the most interesting is New Ross Manganese Prospect, a series of southwest-northeast trending shear-hosted pyrolusite veins with up to 51.2 weight percent manganese oxide. These have been exploited historically with minor production from a series of five small-scale shafts and pits. One of the most commonly discussed critical mineral groups is the rare earth elements, due to their scarcity and the degree to which their global supply market is dominated by China. Nova Scotia has several promising rare earth element prospects hosted by peroxaline granitoids in the Cobquid Highlands, northern Nova Scotia. The best studied and explored of these is the DeBert Lake prospect, where grab samples of rare earth element bearing dikes can contain greater than one weight percent total rare earth element oxides, with a strong enrichment in the heavy rare earth elements. This prospect has undergone moderate drilling and has been compared favorably to the Bokan deposit in Alaska. Two closely related critical minerals, tungsten and molybdenum, occur across the province, associated with scarns, porphyry, and most abundantly, peroluminous granitoids. The most interesting is the Long Lake prospect southwest of Halifax, where molybdenum is hosted in pegmatites, which have associated tungsten, tin, copper, grisons. Other, even more underexplored opportunities occur throughout southern Nova Scotia. Antimony is another critical mineral with interesting opportunities in Nova Scotia, with two significant occurrences. Antimony was produced historically at West Gore, Hants County. Antimony gold mines at this site produced hand cobbed ore with up to 40% antimony in stibnite and native antimony, although total production was not recorded. A smaller, but no less fascinating prospect is at Lansdowne, Digby County, which contains 1-2% to antimony in veins containing a variety of antimony-bearing minerals such as jamisonite, belangerite, and stibnite, as well as poorly understood anomalous concentrations of cobalt. Lastly, no discussion of critical minerals in Nova Scotia would be complete without a mention of tin. In Yarmouth County, the southwest Nova tin domain hosts numerous tin occurrences, with the East Kempfield mine, which closed in 1992 due to low tin prices despite, at the time, being the only North American tin producer. This brownfield site is currently under proposal for redevelopment by Avalon Advanced Materials, but numerous other prospects are in the area, including Dominique, where drill intersections of up to 0.51% tin have been reported. These deposits and prospects are made doubly interesting due to the strongly elevated concentrations of indium, another critical mineral, which is necessary for the manufacturing of touchscreens.
Other granitoid-related tint occurrences are found across southern Nova Scotia, most of, which, most of which have not been heavily explored. Thank you for your time, attention, and interest in Nova Scotia. For more information, please contact one of the geoscientists listed here, visit our virtual booth, or explore our mineral occurrence database at the below URL. Thank you.